realized that uh, didn't realize that Tess was going to be needing a kidney. And I was concerned about Tim. And all I got to say is, you folks are hard on pastors and wives, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I know you love them, and you know this is Pastor Appreciation Month, and so make sure that you show your love to Pastor Tim and, and also to Tess as well. This uh, sermon today might just be apropos. Our text for today is Psalm 23, and I'd like to read that for you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou dost prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody a farmer here? Anybody farm? Anybody had a farm? Anybody do farming? Yeah? We do farming. <laughs> I remember, uh, you know, let, let me just say this about farming, because I grew up in a town one, there's farms all around. I wasn't a farmer, but, you know, if I were to tell you, farming's easy. I mean, really, all you do is plow up the ground, put a little seed in there, and hope the rain comes, and then you can play golf and go swimming and do all that kind of stuff until harvest time. And then you harvest it. It's just simple. <laughs> what if I told you raising livestock was even simpler? You just build a fence and you put them in there and feed them some food every now and then. And before you know it, you take them to the market. I mean, it's just pretty easy. Would you think I knew what I was talking about? No. <laughs> No, listen, if you believe that, I've got some oceanfront property in Kansas I want to sell you to. So, um, I remember as a young person, I went out to Sandy's folks' uh, house out there. They had some land, and I don't know if they had corn or beans or whatever, but my brother and I were going to do some hoeing, some weeds in the, in the, in the field there amongst the uh, crop, and I think we lasted an hour, maybe two that was so hard work and and we weren't used to that and with hay fever coming on we had every excuse in the book and we had to leave early that probably brought your folks a good laugh I'm sure mm -hmm. but you know uh, this psalm is very well known it's uh, used at funerals it's uh, given for encouragement a lot of people memorize it particularly in the in the King James Version, it kind of flows really, really good. But you know, it's uh, interesting that this is something that is very, very familiar to the people of their day. Shepherds. Shepherds were familiar. They're not too familiar nowadays. I mean, you know, the, the, the folks in the Old Testament would never have said, the Lord is my, you know, orthopedic surgeon. The Lord is a famous baseball player. The Lord is a great and great and marvelous computer program. They didn't, they didn't have those things in mind, so it wouldn't have entered their mind. So whenever we talk about God, we always put God in relative language. In other words, relative to our life situation and to the circumstances and events that we grew up with. And so they grew up with shepherds, and everybody knew this. This was a... a you know, to, to take sheep and and shepherd. That was that was kind of the lifeblood of, of Israel. It provided milk and food and clothing and those sort of things. So it's something that that was very meaningful to them. So the first part, I'm just going to go through and make a few comments on this. We don't have time to do an exegetical study of it or anything of that nature. But I do want to say that uh, that first phrase is important. The Lord is my shepherd. And one has to ask, is the Lord your shepherd? I mean, some people know about the shepherd. 
Some people study about the shepherd, but it's another thing to know that the shepherd is yours. And the shepherd cares for the flock, we know that. And, uh, you know, I just think of so many people in today's world that feel unloved and, and devalued and worthless and uh, not cherished, and they don't feel like they belong anywhere. I mean, I, you know, older folks, uh, uh, if you've been in a nursing home or something like that, I mean, you can, you can feel forgotten mm -hmm. and unloved. If you, you uh, have a, a handicap or something like that, you can, you can be left out. And I, I think about all the people today, uh, high schoolers who aren't on the in crowd and, and uh, don't have very many friends and all of that. I mean, there's a plethora of people who need to know that the shepherd loves them and cares for them and that they are valuable mm -hmm. in his sight. If you grew up with a mother and a father who loved you and cared for you, you were given a valuable treasure because they instilled character into you, you felt loved, you felt valued, you felt worthwhile, you felt connected, you felt like you belong, mm -hmm. you understood what the family was. And if you're like me, if you uh, had a church family, you felt even further loved mm -hmm. and you felt God's presence there. The Lord is my shepherd. So is he your shepherd? Mm -hmm. I hope so. Mm -hmm. I don't think you'd be here today unless that was the case. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, when I was a kid, I didn't understand this. It didn't make any sense to me because I thought I didn't want a shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I don't want him. I couldn't figure that one out. It took me a while. Well, that's not what it means. It means that because the Lord is our shepherd, we lack nothing. Amen. We lack nothing. Amen. So, you know... One of the things that, uh, if I happen to watch TV, I don't watch a lot of it, but if I do, uh, I notice that even on the radio, they're, they're all, people are always trying to sell you something. They always, that's what marketing is all about. It's, it's about the hope of gain and the fear of loss. So if you don't come in this week and buy this product, you won't get it at this price. And we all know you need this product at this price. <laughs> I don't need a lot of things that they're selling. But they want to create that kind of urgency that somehow you are lacking something. Mm -hmm. You are missing out on what millions of others need and want and are doing. Actually, when the commercials come on, I mute them and I pick up some book to read or I'm proofing some of the work that I'm doing and that sort of thing. Because the most important real estate on this planet do you know where the most expensive real estate on this planet is? Mm -hmm. It's right up here. Mm -hmm. And I don't let anybody in there that doesn't need to be there. And I don't let even the advertisers take up space there because it's precious. Mm -hmm. And we lack nothing with the shepherd. And it's a sense of contentment. It's a, it's a sense that the hyperactivity of life is winding down. No more hamster wheel uh, life where you're always trying to make more, do stuff juggle everything. Life isn't worth that, friends. Mm -hmm. It's contentment in knowing your shepherd. Being completely satisfied with God in your life and placing your life in the hands of God. It's when there's no contentment that we begin to uh, look for greener pastures. If only I could just get to that grass on that side of the fence, I know I would be I saw a cow got down on his, and his I was going to say hands and knees. <laughs> Cows don't have hands, but got down on his knees and stuck his head through the fence so much that he was in an awkward position, but he was just going to get that grass on the other side. Listen, if, if you're that discontent and dissatisfied, then there's something up with your relationship with the Lord. Because a healthy one God provides. So my brain kicks in. I'm a thinker. And I thought, well, that sounds pretty good that God provides, but I know a lot of people that are lacking. They're believers, but they lack the proper food. They lack 
lack proper nutrition, they lack heat in the winter time, uh, they're poor. Uh, I think of the martyrs throughout the years, the, the apostles, many of the apostles were martyred for their faith. Yeah, you can have everything in life, but uh, tell you what, you, you lack life itself because we're going to martyr you, we're going to murder you. Is that God taking care of somebody? And then I thought of the, the, the Jews during the Holocaust. I mean, if you were in Poland and, and uh, you know, the Nazis rounded you up all oh, because of your ethnic identity, and then they put you in the Warsaw Ghetto, and then one by one they took your family off to, uh, on the trains to the various camps, and then before long, uh, most of them were burned and incinerated, and the rest of the people were workers in the camp. And if you look at the pictures of the Jewish Holocaust victims, you would find that they are just thin, they are emaciated. You can almost see the bones mm -hmm. and the organs in their system. And you say, is there a God? I thought God was supposed to take care of these people. That tells me that the lacking uh, this contentment is far beyond materialism. It's something far greater than that. And so when the martyrs were dying and Peter was hung upside down because he didn't want to die the same way his Lord did and others were uh, terribly, uh, you know, harmed. And they did it with joy and they went forward with it. Why? Because... When you have God, you have it all. You are lacking nothing. And when you have the presence of God and you know the power of God and the Spirit of God in your life, what else is there? Does it really matter whether you drive a Ford or a Maserati? One might be more comfortable than the other, but they both have wheels and get you to the right place. Amen. So this is what knowing the shepherd does for us that we shall not want. Why? Because we've got the greatest treasure there ever was. Knowing the shepherd is all satisfying. If you have that, everything else is trivial. Amen. The psalm says that he makes us lie down in green pastures and leads us by still waters. Mm -hmm. That's the care and comfort of God. As you go through the trials and tribulations of life. You know, sheep, as I'm told, will only lay down uh, when they, they're free of fear. When there's no predators and when they feel at peace, that's when they lay down because they know the shepherd's there. And so there's something about the peace of God that transcends all understanding. And some of you have been through some trials and tribulations. You know what I'm talking about. There's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can't. I mean, we live in a world where we have surgery and doctors, and that's wonderful. That's great. But you still have to go through that stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like having the presence and power of God with you and the shepherd. Mm -hmm. He restores my soul. Have you ever been down? Emotionally? Mm -hmm. You ever been depressed or worried? Well, yeah, if you're human. <laughs> you know, we all get that way. I remember, I think it was, I'd been in ministry for some time now in my younger days, and I had a very difficult church, and I remember getting up in the middle of the night and I'd sit on my recliner and my heart was just palpitating like crazy. You felt like you were going to die because of the stress and the tension and all of that. Uh, not all churches are healthy, friends. Not everybody who claims to know Christ really knows Christ. Mm -hmm. And not all pastors are good either. You know, let's be fair and honest. But I began to say, God, if, if I get knocked down one more time, I don't think I can get back. And so I began to look in the paper for jobs, and the only job I could find was a bus driver of the big yellow buses. And I thought, I think I would rather be a bus driver than go through this. That tells you how, how bad it was for me. But you know, 
It was only temporary. Mm-hmm. Because the shepherd comes by and grabs your hand and says it's going to be all right. Hallelujah. And it was. Yeah. And it was. Amen. My father was uh, had chronic illness at the age of 43. He had quadruple bypass surgery. 43. Wow. In his 50s, he had a second one. He then developed bronchiectasis, which was a lung problem, probably because of the chemicals that he worked around down at the music store. He then developed Parkinson's, and he got so skinny that my mom would have to lift him into bed by the by the pant straps. Mm-hmm. You know, he was so thin. And he only had a certain amount of blood flow to his heart. He never knew from day to day whether he was going to wake up in the morning. Would this be his last day? How do you deal with that? How do you live with that? Well, let me tell you something. When you strip yourself of all the false security systems that you hang on to, all the things that you think are valuable in this life and that you pride yourself in, when you strip yourself of that and you have nothing Mm -hmm. but a daily miracle of God to keep you alive, that's when God becomes real. Amen. And that's when your soul is restored. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying God is indeed our hope. Amen. Boy, walk through the valley, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. What kind of a God is it? What kind of a God is it that we serve that has the capacity and the power to reduce the anxiety? levels in our life, to reduce the fear and to bring comfort even amidst the trials and adversities. That's a God worth serving. Mm -hmm. And that's a God worth loving and following. Mm -hmm. He will prepare a table before me in the midst of my enemies. I love this picture. Mm -hmm. Because I just, I just, I think, you know, I, I think of you know, you ever watch The Sound of Music and they're up on the hill, The Sound of Music, and she does her thing and it's just uh, nice and cool and the green grass up there. But can you imagine being up there in that beautiful place and there's enemies surrounding you everywhere you look. You look to the left and there's these people growling at you. You look to the right and these people are upset with you and they're ready to do this. You look straight ahead. You're surrounded by enemy. And so what do you do? You spread a picnic blanket. You open it up and you start eating fried chicken and biscuits. And that's good. Amen. And you do that in peace. And you do that in the presence of your enemies. Wow, what a what a picture. Even in the midst of enemies who want to make your heart melt. And instead, you're feasting in the peace and comfort of God. That's Amen. amazing. Amen. Listen, the point of this psalm is this. It is good to dwell with God. Hallelujah. And to go with God and God goes with you. And you can experience peace and joy and comfort and security and sustenance amidst the trials and tribulations of life. We're going to have them. You know, my day's coming when my surgeries are coming. Uh, I know. But... I'm preparing now in the plane Mm -hmm. for when I get to the mountain. Mm -hmm. And I'm building up that trust and that relationship with my Lord. I want to close with this uh, story. There was a pastor, somebody I knew up in Minneapolis, a large mega church. and Somebody in his congregation had a child that um, had a tumor and in his brain, so they had to operate. And so as they put the child on the table to operate, they put the clamps on the head too tight and created a stroke in the young child. And the pastor was called to be with the family. And what do you what do you say as a pastor to somebody like that? I mean, the temptation is to spout out these pious platitudes, these this bumper sticker religion type stuff. And, and instead, sometimes it's best just to be present and to feel the pain and to be the presence of God to somebody. And so the mother was, was kind of getting 
distraught and, and almost hyper in a sense and didn't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And this pastor just felt led of the Lord to say something and said, you just need to receive from God. Mm -hmm. And she said, I don't know what that looks like. I, I don't have any idea. I don't know how to do it. So the pastor went and stood with him and said, it looks like this. Let's just raise their hands mm -hmm. to God. Yes. Amen. Well, the child died. But the pastor felt like a real heel. I mean, why didn't he whip off some fancy scripture or some, you know, wise saying? Instead, all he said was, do this. I mean, it makes you feel like a real heel sometimes. Several years later, the family saw him and said, uh, you won't believe the ministry you had with us. Mm -hmm. um, that was difficult for us, and we went through a lot. But we learned a lot about God. And we know our boy is uh, safe and we'll see him again. Mm -hmm. But they learned to trust in the shepherd. Amen. Of all people, my friends, we are blessed to have a shepherd like that. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our closing hymn, shall we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What page are we? Uh, 786. Amen. Thank you for this wonderful message, Pastor. It's time for us to count our blessings. Amen. Amen. It's so beautiful that, you know, we will only remember the blessing of the Lord. It's such a beautiful, beautiful and timely sermon, Pastor. Terry, thank you so much.
should you choose to accept it is to read Psalm 23 every day for the next seven days. Amen. Okay? Amen. Let's receive the benediction. Thank you, Jesus. May the love of the Father and the Amen. tenderness of the Son and the presence of the Spirit gladden your heart and bring peace to your soul this day and all days. Amen. 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 Thank you.